So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the C-Series here. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think the thing you want to put in your heads is, uh, what we really should have called this presentation was, it's, it's not magic, right? It's just physics. And uh, that's what it's all about. This is pretty straightforward stuff. It's math-based, and it's pretty easy to figure out. So let's walk through a few of these things. So here it is. This is the uh, wind tunnel test we've just completed on our um, on the C-Series. It's uh, fourth generation aerodynamics, and of course, it's very, uh, validated uh, through the competition fluid dynamic models, but then also absolutely uh, uh, field tested in the, uh, in the wind tunnel. So the drag count has been valid, validated for the C-Series, and so that's sort of item number one. And here's the engine. This is in beautiful Mirabelle on our uh, Mary Ellen's airplane, which uh, she gets to be right around in quite a bit. This engine has about 700 hours on it, and uh, the flight test of the, uh, of the gear turbo fan is going extremely well. And so the first thing that's been validated is the fuel consumption SFC on the airplane. Uh, looks very, very good. And then the next thing is the thrust. So the thrust looks good. Looks like we're going to make exactly the right thrust with the right SFC at uh, entry into service. And so we're very excited about the progress that Pratt's making with the engine. So you have drag count, you have thrust, you have the SFC. Well, here's the nose section. This is for uh, flight test vehicle number one. We also have flight test vehicle number two and number three loaded in the jigs. And so this is the... Uh, this is the first airplane that will be loaded in and assembled with the other pieces that are coming together in Mirabelle in our factory. Uh, you see here, this is an absolutely beautiful factory. This is our Saint Laurent facility just north of Montreal. And so we know a lot about the weight now. We have a lot of the pieces. We know what they weigh. And so the weight's coming together. Program weight is, is uh, going to be at spec, basically, at EIS. And we're very excited about that. So we've got drag count. We've got thrust. We've got SFC. Uh, we know what the weight's going to be. Uh, this is the material system, and this is a, sort of a cartoon picture of our material system. Black is composite, and uh, the silver color there is aluminum lithium. Now, <clears throat> we all know that composite uh, delivers a lot of weight benefit, but remember, what composite really does for you is a couple other things. It dramatically reduces part count, dramatically increases the, uh, uh, the shape. So you can do very complex arrow shapes with composites that were pretty hard to do with metal. And so composites, uh, that's, you see those uh, composites used in fan blades, etc. So composites are very good for arrow shape, they're very good for weight, and they dramatically reduce the uh, part count of the airplane. The other thing they do is they uh, dramatically um, uh, improve the weight and structural capability of the aircraft and the corrosion resistance, right? So that's the big thing that composites do for you. The aluminum lithium, you know, the weight is kind of a benefit. It's not a huge benefit, but aluminum lithium is lighter than conventional aluminums. And it's uh, tremendously better on fatigue. So cracking is much better with aluminum lithium. But what you really get with aluminum lithium is you get uh, corrosion resistance. And so if you think about an airplane, especially with an airplane like C-Series, once you go aluminum lithium and you go composite, you take the D-check, the heavy check for the airplane, and you go from sort of a five-year D-check to something that's going to be between 11 and 14 years for the D-check, 30,000 cycles. You also go, uh, your C-check interval increases by about 25% over a conventional aluminum airplane. And so that's why you really do aluminum lithium. The weight benefit is some, and it's interesting, and it's always a positive, because, you know, we're all in the game of, of making every single thing better on the airplane that we can, all of us. Uh, but what you really get with the aluminum lithium is you get corrosion, right? You get the improvement in the material system, you get some weight benefit, and then you get uh, some, some basic fatigue benefit. And so modern material system, uh, we know how to do it, and it's be the pieces are coming together, and the, and the big pieces are all uh, forming well. Okay, this is the cockpit. This is beautiful. This is the Collins Proline Fusion cockpit. And the C-Series has, uh, this is a, a just an absolute, if you get a chance to fly the simulator, please come and do it. Phenomenal cockpit. Uh, this is uh, uh, RMP.1, obviously. Uh, it's, a, it's a cockpit which is by design an all airspace cockpit, dual HUD. Cat 3B is an option, Cat 3A is standard. But what you, what you have in this cockpit is you have sort of the, the combination of many of, the, uh, of many of the features that have, that are the best features of many different airplanes. 
So the FMS is all uh, phase of flight FMS. It's all digital, right? So departure, climb, cruise, all very intuitive. The status pages all very, very uh, the complete integration of the mechanical utility systems and um, fly-by-wire side stick controllers. So it has a set of soft stops, and that keeps you within the control laws of the airplane. But if you want, if you need to push through the soft stops, then you can control the airplane up to the alpha luminaries on the airplane. It's also by design; it's trim to speed, not trim to attitude. And so we think that that's a positive, and it, the auto throttles do auto throttle follow. So throttles follow the actual engine, and so the uh, the airplane, uh, the cockpit by design is uh, is what we think is the best combination of uh, all of the modern human factors of all of all of the cockpits, and it's a uh, very very easy to fly, which will significantly shorten the training cycle for the airplane. Uh, I've had about uh, maybe 15 non-pilots in our simulator, and this is I'm not making this up. Every one of those guys has landed, uh, guys and gals, has been able to land that airplane on the runway first pass after about a four or five minute brief. It's a very, very easy airplane to fly, and that is, uh, that's not an accident. It's by design. So all digital architecture, very, very important, and that's what you get with an all-new airplane, is you get an all-digital architecture. So the first airplane uh, to have an all-digital architecture is the 787. This will be the second, A350 will be the probably the third, or maybe they'll be the second, it will be the third. And, uh, and what you get with an all-digital architecture is the ability to control the systems uh, completely digital. And so you can't do that with uh, analog systems. So everybody says, well, you know, we're going to do this to our airplane, and we'll do this to our airplane. And I think those are probably good moves from, from the position they're in. But if you have the ability to do an all-new airplane, which we haven't seen an all-new airbody in a long time, Last all new narrow body was the A320 family. That was some time ago. And so these are the things that you get. Now you can get some of these things in some other airplanes, but it takes an all new airplane to bring them all together. So aluminum, lithium, electric brakes. Electric brakes is a reliability issue, which is a productivity issue, right? It trades, you know, electric brakes trade neutral on weight, because it's still basically the same friction materials. But what you get with electric brakes is you get productivity, you get improved dispatch reliability. Three-axis fly-by-wire, uh, that's a weight savings and a control uh, uh, issue. Uh, advanced, uh, advanced health monitoring system, very, very important. If you have an all-digital airplane, and, the, and uh, the architecture of the airplane is all digital, and the mechanical systems and the utility systems in the aircraft are being controlled uh, through a digital architecture, then you can implement the health monitoring. Uh, if not, then you're limited in what systems you can actually uh, control uh, and monitor uh, by, uh, by health monitoring. So with an all-digital architecture, you can do advanced health monitoring, which is actually a productivity issue and dramatically improves the maintainability and reliability of the airplane. 12 to 1 bypass ratio, the C-Series is the only aircraft with a 12 to 1 bypass ratio. Um, the uh, Airbus uh, NEO is going to be uh, 10 to 1, and we're not, I'm not. I'm not sure what, uh, what bypass ratio the, uh, the Boeing's going to end up with. Composite uh, structure, advanced flight tech, we talked about that. Uh, solid state circuit breakers. You know, solid state circuit breakers are uh, a little bit of a reliability issue. They're a lot of a weight issue, and uh, they're, they're extremely efficient to, to maintain it, and, uh, and they also are integral to the part to maintaining the airplane uh, going forward. Variable frequency generators, uh, that's mostly about reliability, and LED lighting everywhere. LED lighting, it's, it's, it's not just sort of nicer, brighter, lighter, uh, but it uses a lot less energy, and it's much cooler, and it's a huge reliability issue. So, so that's what you get with an all-new airplane, and of course there's lots of other technologies, the, the geared turbofan technology, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and all the technologies in the cockpit. But you get it all with a new airplane. You don't just get pieces of it. So, uh, you know, uh, I would be remiss in my responsibilities as a sales leader if I didn't come and talk to you about the economics of the airplane a little bit. And so, you know, here we have the sort of 190, 319, you know, A320 family uh, of airplane. And when you have an all modern airplane and you have the ability to uh, uh, integrate the systems of an all modern material system and you put together a uh, world class bypass ratio, brand new engine technology, brand new material system. Fourth, uh, fourth generation aerodynamics, 
this is what you get. You get basically an airplane that has essentially uh, very close to the trip cost of an E-190, uh, but seat cost of a 320, which is a much larger airplane. And these are the economics that uh, a new airplane will, is able to provide. And so we're very pleased with, uh, with the progress. And again, there's no magic here. It's just physics. And so it's all about uh, new technology and what technology can provide for us in the industry with regard to productivity, reliability, and cost. So here's, uh, here's what the airplane can do for you. This is uh, Manchester to uh, Las Vegas. This is an airline uh, near and dear to all of our hearts uh, here in the U.S. that's tried to, tried to make this work for a long, long time. And uh, under the current cost, they ended up having to exit because they could just never make money consistently in this market. So this is exactly, and the, the fuel cost is the, why well, you have the variation in the, uh, in the cost of the route. But this is, this is where you'd be profitable with the C-Series as opposed to current technology. Every one of these markets on this map is a market that was being served by one of the largest carriers in the United States, low-cost carrier, and was exited uh, sometime after 2010. So sometime last year, every one of these markets was exited because of cost. Every one of these markets could be, could be profitably served as a C-Series. That's what the C-Series does for you. That's what a new all modern aircraft with a modern cost structure can do. And so that's really the big deal. And so of course then the other thing is, well, gee, gosh, you know, you got to sell them, you got to sell them. Well, we do. So the yellow line is basically the 737 Next Gen family. And 737 uh, Next Gen, obviously a derivative airplane. And the blue line is the, uh, the light blue line, is the A320 family, an all new airplane, for sure, at the time. And then the months preceding, going backwards, so from right to left. The months going backwards are prior to EIS. So our EIS is December of 2013. And so we, here we are at that many months prior, and we are exactly uh, where the 737 Next Gen family and the uh, A320 family was prior to EIS. And so we think that the program's going well. We like the progress. We like the customer set that we have. And uh, we're very, very pleased with uh, how the aircraft is shaping up. Okay? And so uh, just real quick in review, so here's some of, our, some of our liveries that we're very proud of. Major accomplishments in the last 12 months. Uh, we took the Q400 over 40 operators, which is very important because, you know, after 40 operators, you start to get liquidity in the asset because very important. Uh, we surpassed uh, 60 CRJ operators. Um, you know, it's a funny thing. We have... We have more CRJ operators in Russia than we have in the United States. Who knew? Um, it, it, it is amazing the, the, how, how widely that airplane is being uh, dispersed. And we just signed a deal with Rwanda uh, today for, for uh, CRJ 900s. We announced eight new C-Series customers for a total of 11. We've got about 2,500 commercial aircraft flying, about 3,700 um, business aircraft flying. So, over the last 20 years, Bombardier has introduced uh, 26 different type certificates. And so uh, Bombardier, is a, they know how to certificate an airplane, they know how to build an airplane, they know how to run a program. We're going to also, we have in production as we have the C-Series in production, we also have the new program on Lear 85, the Global 7000, the Global 8000. Okay, and with that, I'll turn it back over to Mary.